Hello fellow psychology and gamer nerds, my name is Brian Hamilton, with Wizards of the Coast releasing a new line of Magic the Gathering cards inspired by the Forgotten Realms, I thought it would be a good time to talk about Lolith. For those of you who don't know, Lolith is a female deity slash demon lord created by Gary Gygax for the Greyhawk campaign setting in Dungeons and Dragons. Her first mention was in the adventure module Descent into the Depths of the Earth and was part of the Vault of the Drow series. In 1991, she was introduced in Drow of the Underdark by Ed Greenwood as a deity for the Forgotten Realms campaign setting. Lolith is the leader of the Drow, a race of dark-skinned elves who live in the Underdark. Known as the Queen of Spiders, Lolith takes the form of a half-spider, half-drow creature. Once known as Arashni, the former consort of Corellan Lorethian, she tried to kill the elven god in order to gain his powers. What is this you have done? Corellan asked softly. What could you possibly hope to gain by such actions? If there is anything that you lacked, you had only to speak, and I would have given it to you with joy. Exactly, snarled Arashni. You would have given. True power is not given, but seized. As to your great gifts, I held in my hands the destinies of mortal beings, but was my own ever mine to command? You treated me like some cherished and cosseted possession while standing in the way of everything I desired. Because of her treachery, Corellan transforms Arashni into her spider-like form, Lolith, and banishes her to the 66th layer of the abyss. There, she transforms the layer into her own hellish realm known as the Demon Web Pits. Lolith's story has many themes that are similar to those of an ancient Sumerian goddess known as Ereshkigal. Like Lolith, Ereshkigal had another name, Nenlil, the goddess of grain. When Enlil, her consort, was banished for having raped her to the Sumerian underworld of Irkala, Ereshkigal followed him into that realm and became its ruler. Like Lolith, Ereshkigal becomes a goddess of raw fury, spite, and aggression. When the goddess Inanna seeks an audience with her, Ereshkigal strips Inanna of her noble accoutrements and places her naked body on an iron spike in the depths of her kala for the audacity of thinking she could come to her as an equal. According to Silvia Pereira, in her now famous essay, The Descent of Inanna, Myth and Therapy, she says, from the perspective of the patriarchy, the rape of the goddess establishes masculine rule over conscious cultural life and relegates feminine power and fertility to the underworld. In both stories, there is a violation of the feminine body. In the case of Lolith, Corellon is the one who transforms her into her demonic form and casts her out of the elven pantheon into the abyss. In the case of Ereshkigal, it was Enlil's act of rape that causes her to leave the realm of the gods and establish her rule over Yerkala. Pereira goes on to say, from the perspective of magic matriarchal consciousness, Death is a transformation to which the goddess willingly surrenders and a process over which she rules. Lolith and Ereshkigal both claim dominion over their realms, representing the fact that even though they have been banished, they are still active powers in the world who cannot be denied or ignored. For women who are struggling with trauma resulting from rape or domestic violence, Ereshkigal and Lolith are figures that help them understand their suffering. When they are with them, they are able to connect with their righteous anger and power. For example, when Inanna merges from Irkala, she is given the power to find one soul to replace hers and uses this power to eradicate her foolish husband who took her throne in her absence. Women who dwell for a time with Ereshkigal or Lolith are able to develop new awareness and recognize their power to eradicate that which is false and a threat to their feminine power. As Pereira states, when we are reduced to such depths of numb pain and depression, to timelessness, pre-verbal chaos and emotionality, all that we call awful or infantile and associate with the archaic dimensions of consciousness, we can know that the goddess we must serve and revere is Ereshkigal. Contact with her grounds a woman. It coagulates feminine potency to confront the patriarchy and the masculine as an equal. Connecting with Lolith and Ereshkigal helps clients see that their fury at having been victim to the violence they experienced is justified. That even though they might suffer for a time, they can emerge from this experience with newfound power. 
These are the goddesses that help women acknowledge their thoughts, their feelings, and needs, and to help them orient to a world that is otherwise hostile and suspicious of their feminine power. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to be notified when I upload new content, please hit subscribe. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in therapy.